He won a Super Bowl in his last game of his career, 2005, with the Steelers. Unlike Matt Hasselbeck or a Tom Brady, he was a first-round pick, the pride of Notre Dame, and he went to the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he was a dominant player. So you have lived a life of fame and um, branding. I mean, Notre Dame at the time was the best college program in the country. Yep, yep. Pittsburgh was the biggest brand with the Cowboys in the country. And so you didn't have the fight, like chip on the shoulder. Yet, you had a great career. So much of this league, half the league is undrafted. Right. So what what made you so motivated? What, what, what pressurized you? Because you go Notre Dame first round, 30% of the first round busts. Yeah. You never, you just got better and better. Because what motivated me was, I was a fullback in college. I had never played tailback. So when they drafted me and said, we're going to play you at tailback, there was some question marks about, can he play tailback? He's never done it before. So that was my motivation because every year I needed to, to be a better running back because like I didn't know how to spin move or stiff arm. I was just a tank. I was just just running guys <laughs> over, boom, boom. So I had to learn how to make people miss and do. So that was my drive because everybody said, ah, we think he's okay. So where did you get, where did you get, like stylistically? Yep. He just steals. I mean, we all do it in life. We have mentors. We have yep. idols. Yep. What running back did you say, I like that move. I'm taking that. I, growing up in Detroit, I saw Walter Payton. Oh, and the I best just running saw, back I've ever seen. One hundred percent, and I just saw how he never let one guy tackle him. Right, so I'm saying to myself, I like that because that was his tenacity. It, it wasn't. He wasn't like this specimen, uh, or you know, he had this sweet move. He was just sweetness, right? He just made everything go. So I watched him and said, you know what? I'm not going to let one guy take me down. I'll figure out, learn how to play the position, but I'm just going to take that same tenacity and just go with it. So I like Mike Tomlin a lot, but we have a trend happening in the NFL. Uh When you played in your prime, the middle of the football field was for defense. Receivers didn't want to go over there. That's right. Okay, it's all different now. Can't hit anybody. So every, even small running backs want to go over the (laughs) middle. You know, finesse tight ends. So, and I've said this, I like Mike Tomlin. He's a great leader and a motivator. Mm -hmm. But like Sean McDermott, can't get the O-line right. Five years now. And I do worry that defensive coaches don't have the sensibility of offense. I don't love the OC. I don't love the O-line. I don't love the offensive identity. Um, Is it a fair criticism of Mike that he is um, a defensive mind, a defensive culture? The league has pivoted strongly. Yep and that he has sometimes made mistakes or missed on offense. 100%. I believe that is the case because when you look at the team, you say, well, what's the strength of this team? In 90% of the NFL, the strength of your football team is going to be your offense. Right. And we look at this team, and they've got the pieces to be special. They've got a great tight end. They got two wide receivers. They got a Haji running back. Harris. They got they've got it all. They got a quarterback. But the question mark is, what type of offense are we? And it's been a question mark for the last it has. three years. It's like what are you don't do you know what they Pickett? are. Do you buy him? I do. I like him. Why? We because we saw the last four weeks of the season. You, we saw his development, and he started to go out and win football games. And that's a hard thing to do in the NFL for a quarterback, a young quarterback, rookie quarterback, to go out in the last drive of a game to drive your team down to, to a winning touchdown or a winning field goal. And he did it, I think, like four times at the end yeah. of the year. And you got to be special to do that. That's not something that just is in the handbook that says, hey, we do this. We do. You've got to be special and make those plays, and he made them. Okay, let's go to Super Bowls. So we have the great quarterback with a young roster Mm -hmm. and a young quarterback with a loaded roster. Uh, Super Bowls, Bill Romanowski told me, tough guy, he said, I don't remember the first two series of my first Super Bowl. It was lights. I felt like I was going to pass out. I couldn't get my breath. Um, You had been in so many big Notre Dame games, Mm -hmm. so many big Steeler games. Was the Super Bowl, though, different? It was. Anxiety-wise? It it was because – it, what people don't realize is the the lead up to the game. It's so long. When you get to the stadium, you got like four hours, five hours before you even play the game. Normally, you get to the you get to the stadium, and in two hours, you're on the field playing. In the in the Super Bowl, it's four or five hours. You're just sitting there. You got pads on. You you're ready to go, and then you get up for warm ups. 
And then you go back in the locker room for 45 minutes to an hour, and then you come all the way back down. And then you got to get up again. So the, the coaches that have been in Super Bowls have an advantage because they know to tell the guy, hey, hey slow down. Let's not do a big warm-up the first time because we got to do this again in another hour. The coaches that don't have the experience go out there and, and, and they go as business as usual, but it's not business as usual. It's so different. Do you have um, do you have a feeling? I, I said I don't remember a Super Bowl. I started early on Philly. I do like Kansas City now. Andy Reid, Mahomes, been in the game. O-line's better than people think. Defense, Spags is brilliant. Um, what should I look for? What was something in your Super Bowl that none of the media people talked about are there these little elements and you're thinking, yep. after the game, you're thinking, man, that, I'll tell you what mattered in that game was blank. The offensive line play. In our game, <clears throat> it mattered. You didn't see Ben on the ground. You didn't see him running for his life. You, you never saw any of that. So the, when we played, Seattle just, they couldn't get to the quarterback. And so it was the offensive line play was outstanding. In this game, it's going to be the same thing. If you see Mahomes running for his life, they lose because he's got to be the guy that makes the plays. Their offense is predicated around him getting pushing the ball down the field. They're not a, a three-step, get the ball out of your hands no. offense, right? So because of that, their offensive line is going to have to protect three, four, five seconds, and it's asking a lot for that Eagles uh, pass rush. So if that offensive line can protect Mahomes, then – they beat the Eagles if they cannot protect Mahomes, and you'll know the first three or four plays. You, you of the always game. do, don't you? you? You'll know right Remember now. Remember the Patriots? Uh, it was Phoenix. The Patriots played the New York Giants. It was the stray hand. Yep. You, uh, Osi Uminiora, uh -huh. Tuck. Uh -huh. First series. That's New right. England tried to get clever with a reverse. Boom. Total penetration by the Giants. And it, and, and it was like. It was like a just a gang, just like boom, and you knew right then. You're like, oh. Every, I remember. I remember because the first series, every giant <laughs> was beating every patriot on the line, and you're like, this is the first series. This is right. this is the first series, and that really predicated the game. No doubt. When we saw <clears throat> when we saw Mahomes, uh, when they played Tampa, the same thing. You saw Mahomes running for his life the first drive, and you like. He can't keep this up. Right. There's no way he's going to be. And they just dominated them. And so that's what you're going to see. You're going to know in the first three or four plays, if if Mahomes can can just manage, then it's going to be a football game. If he's running around back there, they're in big trouble. All right. You've been you've been with Planters forever. Yeah. Haven't you? I, you Ten know, plus years. <laughs> They have a new ad. It, they do. They've got a, a great ad, and it's it's a legendary ad for a legendary person. Mr. Peanut is he's he's going to be uh, roasted, and it's a great <laughs> ad. I'm not going to give too much comedy about it. roasted. Yeah, he's going to get roasted, but you got to be a legend, right, to right. to get roasted. So if this is his moment, uh, he's going to get roasted, but it's going to be a great ad. You got to watch it. Uh, Hall of Famer. It's great seeing you. Thank you. Absolutely, Jerome. Appreciate I get you it. once a year. Uh, best of luck to you and planners, and thanks for stopping by and making and a drive out here. I love watching you because you make a, everybody think. It's not just the normal way to look at things. You look at everything so differently, so I appreciate that. Thanks, man. No problem. Jerome Bettis. It all kicks off Super Bowl Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.